G'day mate, welcome to Friday Facts 312. We've got Fluid Mixing Saga, Landfill, Terrain, and I've got our Infamous Mojo with me. Hey, mate. Hello, Infamous JD. Uh, I don't know whether I'm infamous. Nowhere near as famous as you. Anyway. You're um, infamous for spaghetti, so apparently you're infamous. Probably, probably. That and, terrible and, base builds. And, yes, that's yes. That I last heard. Yeah, yeah. And I just doubled the base from five rockets per minute to ten rockets per minute. So, you know... And chewed up a lot more UPS. Anyway. Um, I win. You win. <laughs> you win. Okay. Um, and we're doing a Friday Facts on a Friday, which is like yes. rare for us. So it came out like really, really early European time, which means it actually shows up Friday for us. So we've got a yeah. few things in this Friday Facts. And a few little things. Because it came out so early, I haven't highlighted anything. Just going to have to deal with it this week. Um a whole lot of summarizing. So Dominic was put in charge of the fluid system um, all the way back at 260. So that's a long time ago. Um, it's uh, a way, long ways away. That's actually a year ago now. Yeah, it is a long time ago. Um, and this is also funnily six years of Friday Facts. I just had to confirm the maths, and I was really expecting something big and massive, and we've got fluid mixing saga and landfill root terrain. Um, it was not what I was expecting. Um, it's a little bit mundane, a little bit of a letdown. It, it's it's a little bit common. Like this, this is a pretty normal Friday facts. Which don't get me wrong, I love the fact that we do the Friday facts. I I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It, it's one of the things that I really, really love about Woob and the way they work is once a week you get a, like a game update and, and, and a little bit of what's happening in the background. Whereas other dev teams are like nothing but silence for three months. And then we'll tell you a tidbit. Um, yeah, so um, Dominic, a year ago, was put in charge of the fluid mixing or the fluid system. Yes. And we've had one or two Friday facts. Um, I know... I've had a few of them. I mean, there's a few linked here, such as 260 and 271. Yeah. I have a feeling there was another one or two. Anyway, um, he was put in charge of, yeah, fluids and, and trying to make them work better. And one of the changes that they had, which we're still out for debate, whether it's been implemented or not, makes fluids process faster, except for T-junctions. Any That's time... the uh, the later system which hasn't been implemented yet. Yeah. Any T junction is um, slightly worse for UPS, which is like every refinery build ever um, is nothing but T junctions. So, yeah. Um, so he got put in charge of that. Um, he's done a lot of work. He wrote a new algorithm to do that. They also decided to anti add the anti fluid mixing, which nobody asked for and then nobody considered and has had a few An problems issue or two. with it since yep um so in principle and this is what i love about programming and coding and all the rest of it in principle um a connection blocks a block of fluid boxes would either be free of fluids or it'd be locked to one fluid and the idea is you can't mix you, know, you can't mix two different fluids uh, two such blocks can only be connected if they're compatible either one has no fluid lock and the other uh or they have the same type of fluid already so if they're both light oil you can connect them if one's light oil and nothing you can connect them but if one's light and one's heavy you can't connect them and an assembler can only set a recipe if it's compatible with the fluid lock on its fluid boxes and i've had this problem before where i couldn't rotate a build or an assembler because the fluid connections wouldn't rotate so i had to remove the recipe then rotate. rotate it then set the recipe and i think it was some mod i was playing with that when you set the recipe it automatically rotated it back to north south so it's then, a strange mod yeah what kind it of mod was, would do that i have no idea it was painful so to remove the pipe then rotate it and then put the pipe back yep and they also need a migration scripts from old saves that contain mixing, which I imagine like there's not a lot of circumstances where you need or want mixing, but they do exist. Um, I've seen it exist. Um, I've seen builds where refinery, all three outputs get 
squeezed into one pipe. Oh, boy. And then it gets filtered at the end. Oh, yuck. So it just sucks out all of the heavy, all of the light, and all of the gas, all into one pipe, and then sorts it at three pumps. At that sounds horrible. That, yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds horrible. The, the one I was going with, like, you know, is flamethrowers and having them running on crude and then upgrading them to heavy and then upgrading them to light or, or vice versa. Yeah, that's a more practical one. Um, that's, that's really the only circumstance I could ever think of apart from mods. Like, there's some stupid mods out there, but we're going to oh, yeah. leave stupid mods to stupid mods. Um, so, by creating the fluid systems... Uh... Yeah, yeah, so, um, when creating the fluid systems, uh, num number one, so part one, a connection of blocks, block of fluid boxes will either be fluid free or it would be locked to one fluid. Um, we're almost finished and, uh, <sighs> things broke. Yeah, things broken. Dominic's, Dominic's English is not great. So this has taken me like three read throughs so far. And I really wish I had time to highlight it. But it didn't happen today. Um, so, they almost... <sighs> Mojo hit me up like 20 minutes ago and said, Hey, do you want to do the Friday Facts? And I know it's past Mojo bedtime. So, we're trying to rush through this. Yes. Um, so, they almost had everything up and running. And then... Um, v and Twinson found some, some issues with waves on a macro scale. So, the wave fluids work in Factorio is very very similar to real life um that if you have a large bunch of liquid you dump at one end of a very very long pipe it will roll all the way to, to the other end creating a wave and then hit the end of the pipe and then start to and, wave and then back. ripple back again yeah uh, which it's actually is kind of funny because it's a byproduct of how the fluid box system works because you transfer one unit to one tile and then to the, and then wants to spread to the next well because it, it's a big difference it averages between one tile one and two and then between tiles two and three and then between three and four and so on and so forth yeah which gives you that wave effect which is like it's it's really really nice and it's really really ingenious and if fluids did more in the game um it could be a really interesting mechanic the thing is fluids don't do more in the game it's a wasted mechanic and it costs UPS. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I already made a pretty compelling case that lubricant doesn't need to exist. Yeah. Like, like heavy, a refinery should probably just output lubricant or heavy oil and just use that directly. Yeah, it should remove heavy oil from the recipes. Is what you basically narrowed it down to. Yeah. Um, heavy but that's, oil. That's is from good one for, of the previous ones. Yeah, heavy oil is good for lubricant and it's good for solid fuel. But we've got light oil and petroleum already for solid fuel. So if Heavy just went straight to lube, that'd be done. Um, especially now, basic oil just puts out petroleum. Heavy is useless. Anyway, um, so yeah, Twinson and V found some big problems with it right before the release of 17 exper Experimental, so they decided to hold off for the time being. Um, they have a new version that seems to be okay, but they're waiting for 17 to become stable first, and then we're going to go through and add this newest version. Um, in saying that, 17's been almost stable for... Are we up to... Five or six weeks now, Mojo. Five or six, yeah, I can't remember anymore. It's been <laughs> at least at least two months. Yeah, surely it, it, it's been almost stable for a while. Yeah. So they thought they were happy with it, and 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 they thought they'd have everything done. And then the problem was in the bug reports. Um, what Dominic thought was finished and and had solved every possible problem he could think of was about one tenth complete. He's had nothing but problems with fluids and and mixing and all that sort of stuff ever since and unfortunately the way factorio currently worked up until now is when you mix fluids the game hard crashes and that was a design choice because it's mildly hard... inconvenient yeah it's mildly inconvenient but it was a design choice so if it hard crashes they get a crash report and if they get a crash report they could fix it and they could know that you were a silly silly man who then decided to rotate something in an odd way shape or form and cause the game to crash because you tried to mix fluids and that's not allowed. Did you not read the Friday Facts? Um, and the most common one was something like this. Having a, a underground with one liquid and underground with a separate liquid and building a separate underground in the middle. Which would um, 
The underground build here is connected to the water, but when you remove it, the water magically connects to the petroleum and the game has a shit fit and crashes. Um, so, yeah, Dominic's been pulling out his hair. Uh, he... Does have any hair le left? I wonder if we go to the, the the pictures of them, if he still has any hair. If he has any oh, hair to start with, even. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even think to do, do that. Um, but, yeah, he's had nothing but problems. And it's been not only problems with pipes, but the number one issue was with assembly machines. So it turns out the code was pretty messy at, to start with. And... Every single time he found an issue with the assemblies, he had to refactor that part of the code. Um, or from the sounds of it, they've actually refactored all of the assembly machine code, which might bring optimizations for assembly machines, which would be nice. Um, maybe, but not likely. Maybe they gave it to us seating and, and it happened magically without any. And things asking. happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, um, so there was about one there was about one million different situations he did not think of. So uh, building a fixed recipe assembler, which I never even knew existed, uh, reviving an assembler, rotating uh, the blueprint of an assembler, building uh, with a recipe and rotation placed over a ghost with a non-default rotation during a full moon, uh, teleporting things, script building, copy paste settings, any combinations of those, basically called fluid to mix and the game to crash. Um, then we got the undergrounds, and, uh, I love this one. Uh, the complexity just keeps getting deeper and deeper, and our seating was probably right. We should have never gone this way at all. Our seating has been saying for, before 17k now, I think is when he started saying. Pretty much since his system was proposed, which is a year ago, he's been saying not to do it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I have to admit, I, I, I build oil a lot more haphazardly now because I can't mix fluids. And I know that that, that safety net is there. Um, but I find it frustrating. I, I, I fully admit, I find it really, really frustrating that I can't mix fluids. Um, yeah, because you can't... Once something's assigned, you can't reassign it to something else. That's the really annoying. That's, that's the really thing. yeah. If if you have a if you have a pipe that has touched a refinery oil input, but has never seen oil, and then you remove the refinery, that pipe is stuck as oil. And the only yeah. way to unstick that as oil is to remove the whole damn pipe. To remove all of the pipe, the pipe and relay all the pipe. Yeah. Which means if I'd mixed the fluids to start with, the solution would have been either put down a pump with a tank and drain it, or remove all the pipe and then put all the pipe back down. So nothing's changed. Basically the same. Except maybe technically I don't lose the oil in the pipe, which I don't care about. Um, so yeah. Uh, our sitting said no, and then it was done anyway. So their bug fixing has been running around circles, clearing one batch of bugs, thinking they were the last ones, and the ordeal is finally over. Only to find another batch, um, ideally from some bizarre modder idea a few days later. Uh, many times I wish that mods never existed, nor multiplayer, nor any players for that matter. And about two months ago, it seemed fine with basically no reports and just a few crashes in the automated crash reports. At that moment, another nightmare materialized in the form of a talented volunteer bug tester named Boss Kid, who we spoke about a couple of Friday facts ago, who took on a personal crusade to break uh, the fluids to dust. I actually imagine him sitting in a dark room with an evil laughter, dreaming about making my next day worse than the previous. Uh, in all seriousness, he has done a great bunch of work with the bug testing and, uh, bug testing and even created... Uh, bizarre modded cases and test scripts and deserves a big thanks he is actually coming to that office next week so follow uh -huh. the news for reports for developers falling out of windows falling jumping jumping out of windows jumping out of windows yep falling out of windows yeah. well, you're falling out of windows and landing on some bullets yeah that too <laughs> um so this is another configuration of um fluid mixing that they just can't fix is the honest answer and I've known about this bug for a while now. It's been in there for at least two or three months. Um, yeah, this... This, this putting, weird exploit. 
Well, it's... Oh, we haven't got to the weird exploit yet. Um, it, it's the oil and the sulfuric acid. And it's putting down that ghost of an underground then rotating it the correct yeah. way. Um, and then because you're placing a ghost over a ghost, it just accepts it. And, of course, deletes all the sulfuric acid in the pipe and would technically... It reassigns it. Yeah, technically right now as Factorio exists would hard crash the game. Um, but, yeah, these, these are all bugs that they've got that they just... They've got to the point where they just cannot fix them, which is a little bit of a sad disappointment for Woob. Um, because notoriously they fix everything. Um, I'm sure they'll, they'll work it out eventually, I'm sure. Yeah, they'll probably just add fluid mixing back in. Probably, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll just go, nope, that's it, we're done, we're defeated. Um, so. <sighs> well, the fluid mixing is needed for, or the fluid mixing prevention is needed for the new algorithm. So if they want the new algorithm, they're going to need it. That's the whole point of this exercise in the first place. Is it really? Yeah, because of the fluid list, it can't handle having multiple fluids in the same pipe. So this is sort of the build-up. This was originally meant to be the build-up to it. So I remember the new system needed to have... They were going to have different fluids with different v viscosity. That was one of the... Uh, stretch goals, I think, for the, for the system. Was it? Because I actually thought... I remember them doing a Friday Facts. They had two people that, that provided a whole bunch of algorithms and data and this sort of stuff and even code. And they said it was going to be done. And I thought that's why they added fluid mixing, fluid, non-fluid mixing, was because you didn't want to try and calculate what would happen with the visco viscosity of the, the liquid. Oh, yeah. Well, there's that part too. And petroleum or, or, or whatever. Okay. Yeah. But, it, but it was meant to be a, a, a sort of an end game thing or a latest problem. So they want to get the basic working and then extend it further by doing that sort of stuff. Okay. Like take it to that level. Okay. So on the list of things, Boss Kid actually added... Um, so up until now, if you've mixed fluids, you've just got to hard crash the game. They've now decided that's it. They're done. They're, 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 they're just going to let it go. So no more hard crashes if you mix fluids. You're going to go have to go back to the well. You're going to have to go to the current method, really. Remove all the pipes that have the wrong fluid them or are locked to the wrong fluid and then replace said pipes. Um, which, look, i got to say, after you get robots, pulling out and replacing pipes is not pipes is not that bad. You just filter deconstruct everything. Well, you remove the connection that you screwed up manually, then you filter deconstruct everything else, wait till the bots pick it all up, once it's all gone, press control Z and it all magically appears back. Um, easy. Yeah, it, look, fluid mixing is really, really easy now. Um, easy to fix, especially if you have robots. If you don't have robots, it's a pain in the ass, but you know, it is what it is. So, they're going to stop the game crashing, which is a good thing. And right now, uh, Dominic still has three mixing bugs on the list, and he is sure they are the last. And mix will be done, lying, uh, but he's lying to himself with a way to cope with it. And the new fluid, fluid, the new fluid algorithm can come soon after. And Boss Kid found a way to use the automatic fluid system mixing as an evil PvP tactic, which is. This is, I find, really, really interesting. So what they're actually doing... This is hilarious. It is hilarious. What they're actually doing now is they are... Basically, if you try to mix fluids, the recipes will just get removed from the structures. Which is just going to stop your refineries or your assemblers or whatever running. Um, but yeah, by using some careful ghosting and replacing of pipes, you could wipe out another player's refinery by cross-linking their pipes thing is too i was thinking about this and the di the the graphic there shows them doing it at the refineries but you don't have to do it at the refineries you could do it all the way out at their remote oil fields like if they had exposed pipes somewhere you could run some water down and then connect it there and then the pipe would convert all the way back into them you know what's worse than that you could do yeah. it with an assembler and half a dozen barrels Oh, yeah, you could do that too. And actually, you wouldn't even need barreled water, would you? No, you could use barreled anything. But you wouldn't physically need the barrels. You just need the assembly machine and some pipes. Oh, yeah, because it just assigns it. It's just going to assign it. Like, 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 yeah, let's run acid. And if you run acid down their oil line, it's going to... Oh... 
Because, well, either way, they'd have to pull up all of their oil pipes, and there's a lot of oil pipes. I'm just wondering which. How does it decide which one it's going to overwrite? I'm not actually sure. Because that'd be the, the that'd be the deciding factor. You'd have to know which one it's going to overwrite. Because if it's only going to overwrite your little build, who cares? But if it's going to overwrite their build, um, that would suck. And Dominic or any guy, any of the guys at Woob, if you happen to be watching this video, my answer would be make sure it overwrites whichever is the smaller pipe section. Because uh, well, the, the, they would have to check that, which means that if they're checking for it, they'd already know the answer. They would, like they wouldn't be able to prevent it in some way. Well, like the code's going to be working. Which one's overriding which one? And I, I'm watching this GIF over and over, and it looks like it looks like the underground is being joined, uh, which is filling the pipe with water. Uh, and that's what's actually causing the, the rewrite of the fluids. It's probably direction based as well. Mm, I'm wondering if it's if it's what pipe has most the most amount of fluid in it. Could be that, um, um, and that has the overriding factor. But then again, they'll both be pretty well full. No, oh, you got no idea how how flat out these refineries are. That's all. Like water, we can see yeah. it's full. All right, but the refineries, we don't have any windows we can see. But yeah, look, I, in PvP, it can be very, very neat, nasty. And and yeah, I hadn't even thought about that, going out and hitting somebody's oil outpost, which is on a PvP map, probably just piped all the way back to their base um, and probably fairly undefended. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, um, that's it about pipes. Pipes, pipes are horrible. Um, I think that's the bottom line. Look, pretty much. We just need to change the pipe network to work like the electrical network. That's the answer, right? It's the answer you know you need, but everyone's sort of dotting around it. Yeah. It, it's the one that's come up time and time again over I don't know how many years. And oh, countless. Yeah. I, I'm, I love the idea. I hate the idea. I love the idea. I. The more I think about it, I'm like... The more I think about it, the more I want it. And I said... When it came up like two, three weeks ago, whenever it was, Friday Facts 300, I think it was, um, that I wanted the windows to so show some sort of direction. Realistically, I've decided I don't want the windows to show direction. I just want the little windows to be blue when they're full of water. And if you can give me some bubbles or, or something in there so it sort of looks animated with no direction of flow, I'm done. I'm done. They need to have some sort of animation and I'm sold. I'm set. I'm done. Um, it's good enough for you. Yeah, good enough for me. It, it just needs to have some sort of the impression of movement um you can even yeah. see it when the pipes when the pipes like even in this little animated gif when the pipes look to be full and the liquids are not really moving the liquid sort of slides back and forth and that, that's enough for me i'm done i'm done it just needs to have that that impression of, of of something's happening and yeah the liquids if you watch your refineries and you watch your water pipes unless you're in a really high flow section um, it literally, the liquid just sloshes forward and back, which is a little bit, and we're well, yeah, done. Okay. Anyway, landfill. So, landfill. Yeah. Um, which, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, this week, Ernestaz came uh, physically to the Woob office to spend some time with us. He normally he normally works remotely. Uh, so we're taking a chance to finish things we had in a drawer that needed closer communication. One of the things was the specific train, uh, terrain for landfill. As you know, we were using grass for it, not anymore. And this is the new, new terrain, landfill terrain we're using, which... Very terrain. gritty. Well, somebody, somebody keeps calling this the brown game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um... Admittedly, the grass was still pretty brown. It was. It was. It was. So, in fact, Toria, we have a clash of two worlds. The natural and the organic planet are off-grid with multiple train types, trees, and doodads. I don't know about off-grid, but sure. Uh, and the world of the factory, which is mathematical, regular, and modular, and totally attached to the grid. Again, I don't know about that one. Um, obviously, they haven't seen V's play base. They haven't seen some of my bases. Um, 
don't know about mathematical, regular, or modular. But anyway, um, that's the theory when it comes to Factorio. So the new train represents a boundary, boundary between these two worlds. The grid on its surface tries to express the artificial artificiality of it, uh, like mechanically pressed some, with some sort of industrial stamp. The imperfect, imperfections of the grid and its irregularities are holding this man-made terrain into the realm of the natural environment. Uh, and for the day, now the sound of the landfill action is not solved. Um, soon we'll take care of it. Because landfill sucks to put down. It's noisy. It's, uh, yeah, it's very noisy. And we're so glad that bots can do it remotely. Um, oh my god. It's so much better than doing it manually. Then again, yeah. at the same time, if you if you queue up uh, 500,000 landfill orders... Uh, it takes forever. Um, you're going to have some problems. Yeah, it takes forever. That's the thing about landfill. Like, you can you can have the bots do it, and they look the bots do a wonderful job. They get to it. They they they're not fast, but it's that thing about automating it. Once you automate it, you forget about it. Come back twenty minutes later, it's done. But oh god, are they slow? Whereas if you just get out there and just do it by hand, it might take you five minutes. It is the most boring and, and brain numbing five minutes, but it's done. Um, so yeah, but you got to put up with the sound, which is um probably the worst part. Anyway, um, landfill. I don't know what I think about it. Yeah, I don't hate it. It's better than the grass. It, it, Personally, it, I'd, I'd probably still use nice fill. Yeah, that's something we spoke about beforehand. So I don't know whether I like it or hate it. Um, hang on. Is that grid like five squares per tile? Uh, yeah, I think so. So that means each tile is meant four to be... Four or five. Yeah, I can't decide if it's four or five. I'm looking at the, the, the single belt segment above the inserter. And I think it's five. So a single tile is one meter. So that means if that's five, that means each one of the squares is 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Which is not quite a foot for those American people out there. It would be... I think it's four. Four, oh, no. should be 25. I think it's five. Oh, underground. One, two, three, four. It looks like it's five. Yeah, that's five. Okay. So, Mojo, maths, this hour. What? Five, no, 20 divided by two and a half. Uh, eight. There you go. It's eight inches long. Per, per eight inches on the square of each side. Although they don't look square. They look rectangle to me. And you can see the the, um, the doodads uh, sit on top of the grid too. Yeah, I don't know if it, that they... I don't know if they're doodads specific to landfill or what the story is there. We have to probably have to find out when the graphics are in. Yeah, because I don't see any repeating doodads. Um, I don't think. I don't know. It's not a large enough sample. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I, I don't know. I, I I don't know about it. Um, it's going to be much better than grass. I'll give them that. But then, as oh, you were yeah. saying, you use nice fill, and nice fill basically. Un on landfills areas don't um it so instead of putting down the green grass it puts down what the terrain would be as if the there was no water the water never existed as yeah. if the water never existed what it does is it creates a copy of the the game surface only it generates it with zero water set to zero oh, and does then it, as you place landfill okay. it copies it back uh, I, I assumed it was made up from the seed generation data and just reverse engineered that um, yeah, it still it technically does that. It just creates a, a landfill surface to, to generate. Okay. So, yeah, it, it's it's a mod that I think I've done a video on, maybe, possibly. Um, it's, it's a good mod. It, it, it's, it's a really handy little mod, and it, it basically means that rather than... and Because I've done it in many, many, many a game where I have, you know, the giantest lake that's right in the middle of where I want to build a base, and I just end up with this giant green patch that was put down by bots, because let's be honest, I didn't want to run up and back and forth and put down landfill by hand, and I just let the bots go at it for a few hours from the memory of my last build. Um, but yeah, Nicefield just removes the giant green patch, because 
it looks really out of place. Um, yeah, it looks very jarring, and it's a very iridescent green as well. Yeah, um, especially on map view, actually. Um, yeah. But then again, like, it's that kind of catch me too, because I sort of like the nostalgia of, like, that big giant green patch was water at one stage. It got in my way, and we had a talk, and the water went away. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I like Niceville. I sort of like this new landfill. Um, it's, I like, at the end of the day, anything's better than the green. I think oh, that's yeah. the bottom line. Anyway. I'm, I'd actually be curious to see what it looks like, um on a big landfill area that's when the, the true test when the giant lake gets in the way of your base and you landfill the whole thing yeah and actually we should be able to see it immediately because landfill i think has its own unique identifier so when you load in with this graphic it should convert i think Mm, it does from memory, yeah. Landfill is an actual separate surface, and that's why if you blueprint an area and you... If you blueprint an area and you click tiles, if it has been landfilled, you can actually copy the landfill yeah, area. Yeah, it's up the landfill. Um, funnily oh, enough, it turns out if you concrete it afterwards and then remove the concrete, you then can't blueprint the landfill anymore. I don't know why. This was... Yeah, um... I think, oh, I think I know. I think it actually, I think it actually does convert it to grass tile. After it's got concrete over it, and then the concrete's yeah, been there. probably the because concrete you, is another layer. Probably because you could only have one tile type at a time. Probably yeah. loses the landfill property. It probably loses the fact that it's a landfill tile, and then becomes a concrete tile. And then when you pull up the concrete, it doesn't revert back to landfill tile type. Yeah, because it's not. Preserved. There we go. We, we both yeah, read yeah. and learnt something. Yeah we, yeah, yeah, we totally definitely figured it out and know the answer. And yeah. Not, not just speculating. No, no, no. Like, it was only something that was reported on my Discord like yesterday and I'm like, I had no idea. Um, there you go. Learn something every new, new every day um, and every Friday. So anyway, um, I think that's it from us. Nothing else to add? Um, uh, do you want your brain melted? Sure. So you know how you're saying with the fluid boxes where the fluid, you send a certain... Uh, a bulk lot of fluid and it transfers from one to two and then two to three and then three to four. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the waves, yep. Yeah. So that wave from so if it has like a hundred in or fifty sorry, ninety in three and then zero in four, it's gonna to wanna to transfer that. But at the same time, it's also gonna to want to go wanna go back the other way. Yes it does. So the wave moves so if you start the very left hand end of the pipe it's going to move from left to right. But as it moves to the right, it also starts moving back to the left. Back to the left. And then it reflects from the left and then back to the right again. Yeah. And so you get this pulsing back and forth. Yep. So that's one of the problems with Factorio and fluids. And I think... It's a downside to the fluid box system. Yeah, it you is. All that bouncing and back and forth. I think you'd agree with me. The best way to mitigate it is just to use pumps and make sure you have a direction of flow. And that way, if you have sloshing, it only slosh as far as the pump, unless the pipe is kept basically 100% full. If it's 100% full or close enough to, you don't really get any sloshing because there's no room to slosh. Or in the case of the last problem that I had with getting pipes to work, uh, convert it into belts and barrels. Yes, I've actually had, uh, again, somebody on my Discord who's just gone through the process of belting their refinery because it was easier. I think it was also more UPS efficient or maybe that was never decided. Um, I've never seen anything conclusive. Yeah. And, I, and I've done, seen a lot of the builds and it's sort of here and there. It, it, it very much depends. And if, if you can build it without balances, I think is the key. You, if you need to do barrels, you got to do barrels without balances and without with bots no no because bots don't move nearly enough anymore oh that's true yeah um so it has to be belts it has to be inserters inserters are a big catch because they just don't have the throughput that they used to because you're dealing with belts um barrels don't carry as much as they used to because we've nerfed them um make yeah. barrels great again make barrels great again yep that's a mod um, <laughs> it is yeah anyway i think that's right. it 
that's enough for fluids and, and, and everything this week. So thank you guys very much for watching. As always, do hope you've enjoyed. And we'll see you next Friday, Saturday. Next Friday, Sunday. thanks. No, next Friday, fast. We've already done with Sunday. Although, actually, depending on when this video goes out, but somewhere in the next several hours to many hours, um, we're both, well, I'm definitely hosting a Bite of Battles on Twitch. Link's down in the description. And possibly Mojo's going to join me at 6 a.m. Sydney time. I'm going to try. Yeah, so there's links to my Twitch and Mojo's Twitch down in the description. By all means, go click them. Come watch us shoutcast to Bite of Battles. Yes, yeah. it's PvP Factorio and um Yeah, intense. Intense is the word I'm gonna use. Pretty much sums it up. Yep. Anyway, that's it. Alright. Bye. Bye bye.